Hey everybody and welcome back to the Need a Lift podcast. That's right, this is the Need a Lift podcast with me, your happy host, Clyde Always. That's right, that's one part Clyde, one part Always. Combine, thoroughly, enjoy, immediately. And I'm joined here, as always, as ever, by my lovely wife, my blushing bride, my better half, Mrs. Kaylee, the ukulele always. Singing like a birdie today. That's for goddamn sure. And it's a beautiful day here, everybody, in the city by the bay. And today is no ordinary day at the Needle Lift podcast because I'm not joining you from my bay window in the lower hate. I am, in fact, joining you from my wench's underground hovel here in the Sunset District of San Francisco. And it's one of those rare sunny days in the Sunset District. That's right. No fog lingers. Only blue skies as far as the eye can see and that fresh sea breeze just skimming off the Pacific Ocean. It's scrumptious on the old nose holes. So as soon as I'm done with this here podcast, I am going to yeah, take a hike. I'm getting on out of here. I'm going to go down and I'm going to see how that green, green grass feels underneath my feet, okay? Because there's a stern grove right by here and it's a hell of a nice place to go on a day like today. Okay. Now we're going to relax. This is going to be a high energy, but we're going to have to not ramble and we're going to have to try and contain the outbursts. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would never try to contain my outbursts. Not with you, Mr. or Miss Listener. Anyway. I've got a pep talk for all of my creative friends listening. In fact, uh, before I carry on, if this is your first time joining us at the Need a Lift podcast, allow me to just state my intention as clearly as possible. As a podcaster, it is my intention to give you, yeah, a little encouragement, to share with you a little positivity and affirmation of your creative destiny. I would never want to knock you down, and I would never want to discourage you from doing that thing that you are so inclined to do, whatever it might be. It could be anything. Maybe you want to make porno movies. Maybe you want to crochet socks with little frilly lace around the, the edges. I don't know. It could, it could be anything, okay? But the point is, is that Every, int- every artist has an intention behind their creation, and every artist brings forth art into the world that wouldn't have existed otherwise, okay? And sometimes it can be quite a perilous journey on your path to creative fulfillment, but that's why I'm here to say, I'm walking it with you. Let's walk it together. What's that? You're falling behind? Well, come on, you. I'll grab you by your goddamn shirt collar and drag you along if you want to, but let's not take it that far, shall we? Or we can. I don't care. Anyway, t- no, I'm just kidding. Ah! No, today. Today is a swell pep talk because it has all to do with comparisons. Comparing yourself to other people. It's a bad idea. It's a really bad idea. And in fact, it's a recipe for pure resentment and Mm, feelings of inadequacy. Isn't that a lousy way to feel? To feel inadequate. Nobody would want to feel inadequate. So, I know you already know this, but I've got to state the old adage, which is, comparison is the thief of joy. Who said that? I don't know. Some wise man. Some wise man, I'm sure, but... Clichés are are true. That's why we have them. Comparison is the thief of joy. How many artists? I'm guilty of it myself. But how many times have you looked up an artist and said, Oh, shit. He was 28 when that thing got published? Or when that thing came out? Or when he made that film? Or when he painted that painting? He was 28? Damn! I'm a nothing. I'm a nobody. Look at me, I'm 34 and I have yet to create something so brilliantly beautiful. I know, we've all done it, haven't we? We've all done something similar. Now this has everything to do, has everything to do with the fact that when you idolize somebody, you can't help but compare yourself to them. You can't help but wish yourself away from your current situation. So um, before I carry on this rant, I have found... 
or I should say I was shown years ago this po this poem, but I'd like to share it with you guys because I think it really touches on this whole theme of comparison and why it's a bad idea to go comparing yourself to other people, all right? So with no more further ado, this is Sonnet 29 by some cat who is supposedly kind of a big deal in the literary community. His name's William Shakespeare, I guess. Anyway, this is Sonnet 29. When in disgrace with fortune in men's eyes. Which, coincidentally, is the first line. Anyway, with no more further ado, here we go. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope. Featured like him, like him with friends possessed. Desiring this man's art and that man's scope. With what I most enjoy, contented lest. Yet in these thoughts myself almost despising. Haply I think on thee, and then my state. Like to the lark at break of day arising. From sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings. That then I scorn to change my state with king. See, this is a really beautiful sentiment. I mean, what do we do as creatives? I mean, especially people my age. We yearned, or at least we did. We had these grand, these grand visions in our eyes. We had stars in our eyes as little kids. We knew we were a cut above. We were on our way to the level of celebrity. Such a level of celebrity never has been seen before. And that is that we are indeed a product of the 20th century. We as millennials are the last generation of that wacky century. So to look back on the hundred years prior to our birth, we say, look at all of these admirable people who were well-known and well-loved for their good works, whatever they may be. Now, but prior to the 20th century, celebrity wasn't really a thing. I mean, maybe loosely. The, the president or the king was a celebrity, for sure. I guess that's what Billy the Sheik was talking about. That he was sitting there saying, shit, I wish I was the king. I had all these nice things. Had this free ride, this golden ticket. But then he said, shit, man. If that was my reality, then I wouldn't have known whoever this lovely person is that he wrote this poem for. He wouldn't have known that person. So that joy that he feels, that richness of life that he feels for having experienced the love and friendship of this person for whom he wrote this sonnet is worth more than all of that fame and glory, all of those riches and fortunes. So that's to say that your path, right? Your path is yours alone. And you cannot go trying to share it with everybody. You can, or no, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. What I'm saying is you cannot go yearning for somebody else's path because all you're yearning for is the end result of all of their trials and tribulations, all of their own suffering. You don't see that. You don't see the endless nights that they spent sitting awake saying, why aren't I more like this cat? Why couldn't it have been more like this? Why must I be doomed to this existence? Isn't that what we're all doing here? Anyway, the sad thing too, the really sad thing in, in regards to the cult of celebrity is that celebrity in this crazy century has gone to mean fuck all. And that's an expression in the Queen's English <laughs> that means nothing. Celebrity means nothing anymore. It's over. It's kaput. It's nothing to aspire to. Celebrity. How many fucking celebrities are there that I've never even heard of? Somebody comes along, I got a, I got a blue check mark. Everybody knows who I am. Oh yeah? What'd you do? Nothing. I'm an influencer. I take selfies while sitting on the toilet. Wow. Great. What do you do? Oh, I'm a big, fat, disgusting freak who's eating himself to death and making a vlog about it. I've got a half a million subscribers. Really? 
Well, that's great. Now, maybe I'm being a little too critical. I mean, of course, Kylie Jenner should be famous. Why shouldn't she be famous? I don't even know. Is Kylie Jenner a girl? I don't know. I don't know. But the point is, is that we aspired as creatives to rise to the, to the levels of fame and notoriety as have never been seen before. But those days are over. So long as you are on your creative, your path to creative fulfillment, so long as you never let go, so long as you look behind you and you see yourself one week ago and you say, I am miles away, I am miles farther along my path than I was then, then you know you're on the right goddamn track. Now, maybe you're not Alexander the Great. Isn't that what Julius Caesar said? He said, shit. I ain't no Alexander the Great. But whose name is more famous? I would argue... uh, I'd argue they're equally famous. But in either case, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because the point is, is that you should stop comparing yourself to other people. Your art, your creations will live on forever, for eternity. We will all go down in history. Everything's out there in the ether. It's hovering in the clouds. Every song you wrote, it's hanging out up there in the internet a hundred years from now. Think about how easy it'll be for future generations to get their hands on your creations. And even if in this lifetime you never are interviewed on late night television by Conan O'Brien, you can know for a goddamn fact that there's something even better right around the corner, something you couldn't have even dreamed up. So just ride the wave. Ride the roller coaster. And no matter how low it goes, it's only up from there. And maybe back down, but maybe up again. And maybe a loop to loop, you don't motherfucking know. But all you know is that you gotta just strap in, hold on tight, and get ready. Because it's gonna be wild, and it's gonna be your experience. Your creations are worthy of being in the world. And every day you strive to do better than you did the day before. You are firmly on the path to making your creative visions a reality. And let your intention be to leave your audience, your viewers, your listeners in a better state than they were before they came across your in but before they came across your creation what intention could be better than that i don't know anyway hey everybody i'm clyde always and it is october october the 10th month of the year and if you know san francisco you know that we get our final heat wave in october in the 10th month so it is summertime basically I know it's fall, but it's summertime, and it's so beautiful out. So, uh, with no more further ado, I would like to share with you an October poem that I wrote, inspired, sitting on the, the field, on the beach, that's what they call it, at Dolores Park. I sat there, and I watched and listened, hummed along, smelled the smells, saw the bees pollinating the flowers, Heard the breeze through the trees, etc., etc. I could sit here just doing all that stuff. Or I could recite you some poetry. So anyway, I've got a poem about a chica, about a lady, a witchy woman. Because that's the thing. It's that time of year. The witches crawl out of the woodwork. And they're pretty, too. I like the way they look. I like the way the witches look. Anyway, I've seen plenty of witches out there. On the field, in the grass, at Dolores Park. And it inspired this wonderful little poem. So share it with a witch you know. If you'd be so kind. And with no more further ado, here it comes. It's entitled, The Girl with the Lavender Hair. On a sunshiny day, with the breeze of the bay flowing under the clearest of skies... Between avenues gritty, they're set in the city, where mountains and monuments rise. The park by the mission, a likely position, was swarming with girlies and guys. Every bare-chested bro had a frisbee to throw, every blogger a a tweet for the feed. 
Every flannel and beard looked distinguished and weird. Every yogi enlightened indeed. Every fur-covered mutt had its nose in a butt. Every stoner a blunt full of weed. Then the tower bell rang with a bang in a clang, but no creature there bothered to care, most imbibing more brew, though the hour was two, and not one of them fully aware which direction she came, this voluptuous dame, the girl with the lavender hair, stepping onto the scene with the air of a queen, and maneuvering light as a cat, in the flimsiest skirt which she dragged in the dirt, holding onto the floppiest hat, she was muttering words to herself or the birds, then she hawked up a loogie and spat. Whew, that's when Muni and Bart and the popsicle cart, they all suddenly stopped in their tracks. And the rustling palms and the babies with moms, they fell stiller than statues of wax. And the ravings of bums and the hippies with drums, they fell mum as the sweat on their backs. By the jungle gym tykes who had rode in on bikes, they all merged with the bricks in the wall. On the basketball courts, all the homies in shorts, they infused with the hoops and the ball. The burritos, guitars, all the double park cars, they existed as nothing at all. Then the tall boys and shorties and hipsters and forties, their buns and their beanies unfurled, and their picnics collapsed on a river of paps all around in an idiot swirled, while a big cosmic hole, black as raven or coal, opened wide and then wow, swallowed the world. And alone in the night, flying high as a kite, and suspended in darkness of space, was that purple-haired chick in the midst of her trick, with a devious smirk on her face. She guffawed at her joke, <laughs> and she rolled up a smoke, and on stardust, she lit it with grace, with an echoing boom. <laughs> She respired a plume, so enormous and ashy it soared, though as hot as it seared, it eventually cleared. To reveal all that setting, restored. The green grass under sun, all the folks having fun. Loud as lions, their reverie roared. In oblivious bliss, every mister and miss carried on with their happy affair, while apart and adrift, riding off in a lift, and not knowing exactly to where, with the park and the sky, just a spark in her eye, was the girl with the lavender hair. The end. And the crowd goes wild. They goes wild. Okay, hey everybody, I'm Clyde Owens. It's time for that pinnacle point in the episode where we're going to our weekly artist spotlight. And in case you don't know what the artist spotlight is, it's where I cast a spotlight, throw a spotlight, I should say, <laughs> where I throw the spotlight on some great artist, great creative, great free thinker, great doer of something wonderful, be them living or dead. And today's artist that I would like to spotlight is, yeah, a towering figure in the silent film brigade. Now, if I asked you to name a, a star of a silent film, I would say 90% of you might say something like Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton. But that's not the guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, you got it. That's it. Harold Lloyd. That's right. Harold Lloyd, and I really hope you're saying, who the hell is Harold Lloyd? Because I would like you to go and find out, because he is worthy of your admiration. And his films, he was a filmmaker, that's right, an actor, a comedian, a filmmaker, a producer, a stuntman. See, back in those days, people used to do their own stunts. There was no OSHA. There was nobody's breathing down anybody's neck saying, hey, you better not do that, you might get hurt. Fuck you, that's the whole point. The whole point is I might get hurt. Anyway, on that note, Harold Lloyd's most famous film was a film called Safety Last, and I really urge you all to go and watch it, because the beauty of it, too, is that you can watch it for free. 
It's royalty free. You don't need a streaming service. All you need is access to the internet. It's on YouTube. You can take a take a peep. You can peep it. Isn't that what they say? Isn't that common parlance? Anyway, go and check out Safety Last, all right? Because you won't be sorry. Now, the first time I sat down to watch it, I remember thinking, ho hum. This might be a little boring. Well, I guess it'll be good for uh, my e education. In the no, this fucking film is so entertaining. I was riveted from start to finish. What's more, too, I want all young comedians to take a good look at the way this man works because every single punchline is a setup for a punchline coming two minutes later. It's a never-ending laugh riot. And... For the ladies, it's a love story. A beautiful love story. So get cozy with your sweetheart. Pop some popcorn. Kick back. Relax. And you're going to have to read because it is a silent film, but not too much. Don't worry about that. But enjoy. Whoa, sorry. I almost dropped Kaylee the ukulele on the ground. Uh, enjoy Safety Last by Harold Lloyd, okay? You won't be sorry. So thank you. Hats all the way off to Harold Lloyd. He uh, died in 1971, unfortunately. Which, coincidentally, is the year my dad dad graduated high school. Crazy, man. Crazy world we live in. Okay. So to wrap it up tonight, or today, I should say, because it is today, I hope you're listening to it in the day, because I want you to get fired up and go out and create something when this is over. All right, because there's no other day like today, and today is your day, my creative friend. And today's the day that you put into motion all those gears that you've been assembling, all right? And if they're already in motion, today's the day you rev it up into overdrive, okay? Because you can do it, all right? Okay. Now, I'd like to leave you with something beautiful because that's what we should... Yeah, that's how every podcast should end, is on something beautiful, okay? And instead of an anecdote today, I just want to do a simple, wonderful, lovely tribute to my sweetheart. All right, now I know I'm married to my ukulele, but... Man cannot live on ukulele alone. I, in fact, do have a, um, a flesh and blood sweetheart. My dear, my darling one. I know I call her the wee wenchy all the time, but she's my tootsie. She's my tootsie pop, as it were. And her name's Nikki. And when I was in the process of wooing her, I promised her 1,000 sonnets. Men, especially poets. <laughs> Remember that line? It goes a long way. But it's, uh, of course, a lofty goal. But... I have uh, begun the path to 1,000 sonnets. I'm two in, so that leaves 998 to go. And I'm sure I'll get around to them eventually. But number one has always got to be the best, all right? So if you're going to write your woman 1,000 sonnets, make sure the first of the 1,000 is the best one. So with no more further ado, I'd like to share with you a love poem. Nikki's Sonnet the First by me, yours truly, Clyde Always. At dusk, their whispers pulled me by the beard, through fragrant lily meadows, kitten soft, beyond which twilight lumbered low and leered, surrounding me. They drew my feet aloft, like worker bees their wings shone dazzling sheer, flapped faster than of any hummingbird, but calm as butterflies they swarmed my ear, and chittered tiny secrets never heard. They gently dropped me, kneeling at your foot. Where, trembling, I addressed you, Pixie Queen. Or Empress might you be of Lilliput? Then watched your giggles dance through night pristine. So was revealed mere sparse in evening skies. In fact, a mighty blazes in disguise. And that's it. That's a wrap, everybody. I hope you found that poem beautiful. You know I did. <gasps> All right. So, that's it. Go out. Go do it. 
Go create a world of beauty. Go create a mountain of bliss. You are worthy. You can do it. You're on your way right here and now. It's been my pleasure. Tune in next week for another fun and funky, riotous, riveting episode of the Needle Lift Podcast with me, your happy host, Clyde Always, with my lovely wife, Kaylee the Ukulele. Say goodnight, Kaylee. Good night, listener. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later.